All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is December 1st. Happy December to everyone out there. We have a six-game NBA slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total, but all my final plays, if you do want to fade me, those plays will be in the pinned comment i update that throughout the day always in with plenty of time before game time speaking of final plays we have yet another positive winning wasative day last night we go two and one we're now on an 11 and three run in the nba hawks minus seven half the only play that lets us down they really didn't show up till later on in the game they made a fight for it get the dub but not by eight points the nets team total alternate line over 119 and a half for plus 146 let's pump in some crowd noise for that that's a nice hit and then the thunder team total over 119 and a half as well comes through for us and then the fun does not stop there we're looking at a ride of the day also coming in through uh coming in from nakaja ride of the day anthony davis over 11 and a half rebounds how many cha-chings can we get in one video? Shout out to Nakaja there. We needed a ride of the day win desperately. I think it was two days in a row that we'd missed out on that. But uh, guys, if you do want a chance to become the ride of the day, all you got to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Leave an absolute banger of a play, a game pick, a spread, alternate parlay, anything, guys. And I'm jumping on board with one thing that I like the look of. And you guys get a shout out in the next video. Win or loss. A lot of good plays for the ride of the day yesterday in the comments you guys made it really really difficult i almost picked a couple which we don't do very often but nonetheless we did land on this one and i'm glad we did because it did cash now i also want to talk about because it is a new month a november i guess i know season to date and last month record here so you could see we kind of pulled ourselves um back into our normal groove which is what i talked about we went through a really rough stretch at the beginning of november but we're now up you know three and a half units on the season um a three unit month in november so decent plays there not where we wanted to be um but it is only you know a, a month ish into the nba season right we don't need to to pre Press this or get nervous that it's only a few units profits profit uh, we had a good run to close out November so we could take the positives and build with that right I don't want to get too much pressure on and be like uh, we should be at you know eight units right now or something like that no no we're not going to do that profits profit it is what it is I don't love the 51.04 percent uh, or the 51.2 percent in November we want to get more towards that you know 56 58 percent but nonetheless like I said we do have our goals but we got to keep it real at some uh point year two and we are profitable on the year which is a good thing but uh guys let's go ahead and jump into game number one here before we do hit that subscribe button hit that like button we are racing i mean racing towards 40 thousand subscribers thank you guys very much for all of your support um you guys really are the uh the thing that gets the cog and gears going on the channel here i'm just the dummy with the microphone and the camera you guys are the real ones but uh yeah let's go ahead and jump into game number one here we have orlando taking on washington obviously we just saw this game a few nights back uh orlando did their thing this washington team is bad bad i think that we can recognize that um, uh, you know, they really just don't really seem to have anything together. It's it's going to be Kuzma. It seems like this is what I've noticed this year. It's either Kuzma or Poole is going to have a good night, and then one of their other guys may step up. Not really a recipe for success here. Now, the one thing that I'll note is there are some injuries um, to note here for Orlando. Paolo Benchero is uh, is probable here with an ankle. I don't know if they need him to, to beat Washington by double digits here. He scored six points in their last game, and that game's final score was 139 to 120. So, by default, I don't know if this makes it into the final plays, I'll be honest, but by default, I am going to go ahead and lean towards um, the Orlando Magic here, minus the 11 points. You can also get it at 10.5, depending on which sports book you can grab it at. The total sitting at 237.5, and, and I think that's a little bit too high. I think these teams are kind of due for a, a slower tempo game say what you want but maybe they should have figured each other out now they're playing for the second time in three days so uh again i hate to start off the show with the with this game that isn't really a sexy game i don't know if this makes its way into the final plays either but nonetheless my leans and they are slight leans on the game um gonna be orlando minus the 11 as well as the under 237 and a half
Next up, probably one of the uh, or the game of the night. We do have a couple of really good spots in tonight's slate, but we got the Celtics taking on the Sixers. Right now, Celtics six and a half point favorites. Bet 365 has them at six, so maybe they're moving in that direction there. Total sitting at 222 and a half as well. I really do like this spot uh, for an over. That's my first and foremost lean on this game. Now, I'm a huge Celtics fan. My gut and heart wants me to go Celtics minus the six points, but no Kristaps Porzingis. Drew Holiday's questionable in this game as well. It makes it a little worrisome uh, as a Celtics fan that regardless if Drew Holiday plays or not, you're getting a guy that hasn't played in a couple games, right? Chris Stops is already out. There's two of your top four, definitely, maybe top three players potentially not playing, and even if one of them does, a little bit hobbled. I don't love laying the points as a Celtics now. I am a biased Celtics fan to some degree, so I don't really want to go and bet the Philadelphia 76ers and watch my favorite sports team of all time and root against them, so I probably won't be making that a final play either. But I do think that points could be in the uh, the cards this game here. We just saw the Celtics put up 124 against the Bulls. They kind of got that, uh, you know, that sort of, you know, not being able to breach that 120 number off their back there. And Philly, as we know, can put up any points at any given time, almost dependent, don't, no matter who's playing defense on them, right? Averaging over 120 per game this season. Now, they have played um, a couple times already this year. We've seen one game go over this mark and one game go under this mark. Uh, but I do think that, you know, last game was a 117 to 107 finish in Boston, or excuse me, in Philadelphia. I think being in Boston, this is a good spot for uh, the Celtics to be able to contribute and put up at least, you know, 115. So say what you want about how this game's going to turn out. If you like the Sixers here, you should like the over as well, because I think the Celtics uh, don't have too much trouble scoring tonight. All right, guys, I teased it yesterday that we would have some new Fade Me gear on the store, and we do indeed. We launched a couple ugly Christmas crewnecks yesterday. We have the standard Fade Me one right here, and we also have this massive parlay one, which on the uh, on this crewneck, it says, all I want for Christmas is to cash a massive parlay. Comes in four different colors. The ugly crewneck actually comes in a couple more colors, one that says Fade Me on it. Uh, guys, go ahead and check this out over on FadeMe.store. Tons of cool stuff in the holiday collection as well if we navigate over to the holiday 23 collection we have the Grinch drinks we have the Santa drinks and now we have those ugly Christmas crewnecks go ahead and check those out over on fademe.store good stuff guys um, get your orders in by 1210 to guarantee and even I use the word guarantee loosely because as of right now that's sort of the, the traffic measurement we're using but if the orders keep coming in and ramp up it's going to be tough to get those orders by 1225 if you do want them for Christmas so make sure to get those orders in as soon as you can um and i guess it's a good thing that you know we're, we're seeing some traffic ramp up like thank you guys for the support of fade me thus far let's go ahead and jump into the next game here we got dallas taking on memphis this one isn't really a head scratcher to me um i think that this is obviously a dallas team that's better than memphis has dallas been playing to their potential no they've lost three of their last five games here against teams uh you know that are pretty good but Dallas was supposed to be a good team what like two weeks ago right so it makes me a little worrisome but I do think it's a get right spot for Dallas here um they played Memphis earlier in the year beat them by 15 points um and I do like the spot for them again to kind of get right now uh Tim Hardaway Jr. is questionable in this spot uh believe it or not even though coming off the bench and I do think that this is a big deal like that's a guy that's going to give you 12 to 15 maybe plus points per game so keep an eye on that but this is such an injury riddled or suspended Engine riddled um, out for season riddled Memphis team that I don't really trust um, anything that they have cooking up. So give me Dallas here minus the 10 points in terms of the total. It's sitting at 229. I don't really see where Memphis's offense comes from in this spot. Um, Dallas can obviously go out there and score a bunch of points for you and kind of almost hit it over themselves. They're averaging 120 per game, which is six points above the league average right, uh, as of right now. But this is a Memphis team scoring the second fewest points. They're the worst field goal percentage team in the league uh yeah I just can't see them carrying their weight so weirdly enough even though it's a Dallas team they're 12 and 5 to overs this year I'm gonna lean towards the under in this spot just because I could see this being like a a Dallas 120 to Memphis's 101 or something at, at at you know potentially worst case scenario which is very possible so I'm sticking away from this total but I do lean towards the under 
All right, next up, we're looking at the Toronto Raptors taking on the New York Knicks. Right now, the Knicks having a better season than the Raptors, but I'm telling you, there's something about this Toronto team. They're starting to heat up just a little bit. They've covered in four of their last five games. As a home favorite, they're four and one on the season. The Knicks on the flip side, they're five and four on the road, but as away underdogs, they're one and four. And if you look at the head-to-head -head here, last year, um, you could see that this is a team that, uh, you know, the Knicks were dominated by Toronto. I think they match up fairly well so though I don't I'll, I'll say this I don't love the spot that Toronto's favored because I think the Knicks are maybe quote unquote a, a better team but I think it makes sense why they're favored I do think that I like Toronto in this spot now if I roll this it's probably Toronto money line and I'll tell you right off the rip it is kind of risky because I do think that this is a, a good Knicks team but if you look at the Knicks season they're 11 and 7 right but they really whenever they're tested by good teams uh, either they win by a small margin or they've lost you know like and and do you want to put Toronto into the good team category maybe not but like I said I kind of think to this Toronto team's playing a little bit better basketball as of late uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and lean towards Toronto here but I'm gonna lean on them on the money line here now the total sitting at 217 right now uh, it sounds kind of crazy again because these are two offenses that aren't all that prolific and the D the New York defense is good but if Toronto wins this game I think that it's gonna be a game that gets up into the 220s so I'm going to go ahead and lean towards the over as well in this. It is a low number. I hope I'm not just grabbing the, the low-hanging fruit here, but uh, that's the way that I'm going to lean. So Toronto, money line, as well as the over 217. Another quick break, guys, before we do jump into the next two games. I want to talk to you about Outlier. I've talked about Outlier plenty on the channel before. It's my favorite sports betting research tool, especially when it comes to player props. This is their games screen right now. They also have a positive ESV screen. Learn how to use boost, arbitrage, middle bets, all that type of thing. But this game screen, as well as this player prop screen, you can get free for seven days days if you use the link in the pinned comment and then after that you get both of these for just $19.99 a month so even after your trial it is very digestible but what you can do is filter to last five last 10 last 20 you can also filter to odds here but say we like Franz Wagner under four and a half first quarter points he's hit it in 78% of games um, against the Orlando or against the Washington Wizards here 89% of games this year you can click in and kind of get to dissecting even more look at him last year look at him this year uh, you can see the defense versus him in the position guys it is a really cool tool so make sure to go ahead and check out outlier again that link is in the pinned comment you get seven days free why not just go try it for seven days free right i know the guys at outlier uh, i love those guys they probably don't like me telling you that but why wouldn't you just try it for seven days even if you plan to cancel the worst case scenario there and i almost guarantee it might happen uh so beware is that if you go in there being like i'm gonna i'm gonna get this for free for seven days and not care about it you might fall in love with it and then end up paying the 19 dollars 99 cents per month but go ahead and check out outlier guys that link is in the pinned comment we got the pelicans taking on the spurs here a lot of in that spots right like the only two good-ish games on today's slate are the Celtics Sixers and then the Suns Nuggets but Pelican Spurs is what we're dealing with right now this is a relatively healthy Pelicans team here as we know um you know CJ McCollum coming back as well which is uh really good to see he's playing he played almost 30 minutes the other night as well so good for him Spurs coming off of a back-to-back -back loss against Atlanta last night but they almost should have won that game New Orleans coming off of a good win against Philadelphia um, two nights ago. The caveat is Joel Embiid did not play. So I think a lot of people are going to look at that and be like, wow, the Pelicans beat uh, Philly by 10 points. You know, what a, what a win. Joel Embiid did not play. So don't forget that there is a an asterisk there. But that being said, it's the Spurs. I don't think the Spurs are a very good basketball team. I think the Pelicans minus 12 and a half is probably the lean here. But just like I said about a couple of these double digit spreads on the board today, not my favorite number to lay, right? Regardless if if the Pelicans should win by 20, I still don't love the idea of, of them having to lay the, that number. So yeah, I'll lean towards the Pelicans. Uh, maybe there's some sort of a money line parlay throw in. Um, but in terms of a play on this game, my favorite play is probably going to be the under 232 and a half. You have a San Antonio team that yes, they play zero defense. We've seen them have high scoring games all year long. But this New Orleans offense isn't an offense that I sit there and I'm like, wow, this is a crazy fast 
passed offense. Uh, middle of the pack in terms of points per game, uh, but in terms of their field goal attempts per game, bottom 10 team here. Yes, they make a lot of their shots, but nonetheless, they don't shoot a lot of threes. They're a two-point team, which makes sense given the, the personnel, right? Does CJ McCollum coming back maybe bump that up a little bit? Maybe, but I do really like the under 232 and a half in this spot. It's going to be my main lean on the game. Keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if we end up rolling with it. But like I said, this isn't the sexiest of slates, uh, you know, that we've had to date, right? So even though there's six games, we could end up with one play, two plays, maybe a same game parlay. You know what I mean? Like nothing. We don't need to. We've been hot in the NBA. We don't want to throw that all away just because the NBA gave us a bad slate. Like you don't want to just press. And, you know, if we've had three to five picks every single night, we don't need to hit that sweet spot. That's not the sweet spot. This is the sweet spot, right? So be calm, take a step back, be patient, only fire on spots that you like. But nonetheless, Pelicans is going to be my lean here, but I don't love that number. I do think that a chance of a final play could be the under 232 and a half. Last game of the slate. Again, this is either the best or the second best game of the night. We have the Suns taking on Denver. These teams, um, you know, obviously are, are, are two good teams. We give them that credit. Uh, but I do think Denver is that much better than the Suns. They're getting healthy here as well. They do have uh, Jamal Murray listed in the starting lineup, but he is questionable. So we're going to want to monitor that. Devin Booker's also uh, questionable here. Actually, he's doubtful, so he may not play. Uh, so keep an eye on the injury report. That's going to be a massive, obviously, thing that sways this game one way or the another. Uh, but yeah, Devin Booker unlikely. See, uh, J I almost said CJ McCollum. Jamal Murray is questionable here. He did play last game. He played. Uh, they, they eased him into a 20 minutes right so uh we shall see what that goes if he's a go i do like the nuggets in this spot uh, i think they're the better team and i think that they went through a little bit of a slump and i get that um but they came back in and have done their job now you could say well the competition wasn't all that hard to beat right they beat san antonio they beat the clippers um and they beat houston without fred van fleet like i can i can understand that but let's not forget how good this nuggets team is right like these spreads that we're getting are just this low because before those three games, they had lost, what, four of their last five, five of their last seven. Like, yes, they went through a slump without Jamal Murray. He's back. He should be easing the lineup. This is a Nuggets team that is legit. So, um, you know, it's going to be a big-time game. Give me the big-time team. Yes, the Suns are a big-time team as well, but I don't think as big as Denver. I also don't mind some... Uh, uh, I guess some, some Jokic props in this one either. I think that this is a team that, you know, while they're a very good team in the Suns and... and, and Nurkic is a big guy. Jokic kind of outcraft him. Um, and, you know, they used to play on the same team together. I think that this is a little bit of a, a hidden rivalry type of thing in the NBA as well. So uh, just for what it's worth, Jokic, even though his numbers are so inflated, could be considered in some player props tonight as well. Now, the total sitting at 224. I like this one getting up into the 230s, to be completely honest. This is a Nuggets team that the offense is starting to go. I told you that last time. They've now scored 132 and 134, two of their last three games here. And uh, this Phoenix team, I almost think that they are kind of a like uh, this is going to sound weird, but kind of like a, a fake decent defense. Like if even if you look at the numbers, they really don't have much to say. They cover the three point really well. Okay, whoop de doo That's not the Nuggets bread and butter, right? The Nuggets bread and butter is uh, two pointers and just field goals in general. And that's where the Suns struggle. So I don't see the Nuggets having any trouble scoring. And hopefully Kevin Durant can kind of uh, do his thing as well, because I like this game getting up into the 230. So I'll lean towards the over 224. And guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you are still watching, go ahead and Dropping 18 in the comments. Let me know who you think is winning the championship as well this season. Um, I'd love to say my Celtics, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but when healthy, that is an absolute great team uh, with a lot of potential there as well. So, and I don't think that's crazy. Finally, a year in which I can say the Celtics, uh, you know, are my favorite team to win the championship and not be like a loony bin. Um, but nonetheless, guys, that is that is my answer to that. But go ahead and drop 18 in the comments. Let me know who you think is winning the championship. Don't forget those ride of the days. Go cop the Fade Me store. Check out Outlier. It's a plug sesh here at the end. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Happy Friday. Happy December. Let's cash. See you guys in the next one. All right. Peace out.